I are married. We're a husband and wife team. My background was as a dancer. I danced since age seven. My father had bought a camera and he just had brought it home. It was on the kitchen table and I saw it. I took it from there. You stole it. I stole the camera. <laughs> and I ended up photographing the rehearsals that I was supposed to be in. So I started out photographing dancers. I grew up in Los Angeles, and at 19 I went to Paris to become a photographer for six months. I stayed 20 years and uh, returned to New York about 15 years ago. The inspiration for our dance project was based on our daughter, Sarah, an aspiring ballerina, and she wanted her room decorated and she wanted to have pictures of the dancers that she loves. So we ended up looking all over in bookstores, we looked in galleries, we found beautiful photos of older generations, of Baryshnikov and Martha Graham, but we weren't finding beautiful photographs of these dancers. So we thought that we would give it a try. And we contacted one of the dancers in American Ballet Theater, our favorite dancer, Daniil Simpkin, and he said yes. And after that shoot, we posted on social media and it just took off. Other dancers started calling us and before we knew it, we had a project going. Style is something very interesting. When I was starting off in photography in Paris, we thought a lot about what our style was and how we were going to achieve it. I think at the end of the day, the style sort of finds you. And before this project, I really wasn't a studio photographer. I did mostly daylight or outdoors. So you can change. <laughs> Some of the equipment we have doesn't stop the action. And technically, uh, our photos may not be as technical as other photographers in our field. And I sort of find out that they give us more of a personality. That if there's mm -hmm. a little bit of movement, there's a little bit of an accident, um, I'm starting to realize that that's part of our style. I think it is perfection, but I don't think perfection is technique, always. I think if you have a fantastic photo and it's slightly out of focus, it's a fantastic photo. If you have a, a photo that is not there emotionally and technically perfect, um, it doesn't cut it for me. Yeah. We felt that working in the studio with a similar background and similar lighting for each picture really kept the focus on the dancer and the movement lighting and the composition and it, it was easier for us to work really intimately with the dancer without the other elements of the outside. Our process working with dancers has always been very collaborative. We never tell them what to do. We'll tell them when they're going in the right direction and maybe to change the arm or to change the movement slightly but it's a real collaboration both between um, us and the dancer and between Ken and I. So it's a real team effort. We've never told the dancer a specific position they have to do. It's too late. When it does that, yeah. yeah. But I like this position, which is different. Like this one? Yeah. When dancers perform, it's, it's the moment, and then it's mm -hmm. gone. And uh, we're able to capture it, that people can see it many years down the road, and we're documenting artists that are, haven't been documented extensively as actors have. For us, it's really about capturing the emotion through the dancers expressed through their body. Um, we don't want to show tricks necessarily, like sometimes the movements are really simple and really subtle. It could just be a beautiful arm gesture or a beautiful breath that they're doing, but um, really we want to capture emotion through motion. I think that's the message is that they have to have some kind of passion and power in the images. You could even do the leg a little lower, lower and just, yeah, really focus on that hand. Yeah, that's pretty. I'll get you a little bit when you're in that suspension state before you fall now. When we set up a shoot, we think of it almost the way like we would plan a performance. Like, what are the costumes? What is the lighting? What is the mood? What is the set gonna look like? Um, so all those elements come into play and we often borrow dresses from designers or um, costumes from the dance companies. The whole mood of the shot is, is discussed beforehand with the two of us and whatever dancer we're working with. We started coloring point shoes because we figured that the pink point shoes didn't always work for us since we're taking couture dresses. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like the element of, a little bit element of fashion. It sort of changes it up. So we've been painting the point shoes from time to time, from, from the very beginning. It's just a, a little sort of touch, personal touch in our images that yeah. we hope sort of changes it from other people. 
the canvas background is is important for us because paper the dancers would be slipping all over and uh, my liability insurance doesn't cover <laughs> that much. <laughs> the dancers actually push themselves farther than we push them. Uh, we've had people come in here and jump for four hours, you know, and uh, they don't go until we get the shot. And I don't think <laughs> we've ever not got the shot. The secret is to have a lot of ice. <laughs> with a medium format camera for two reasons. It's, first of all, it slowed us down. We only do one frame per movement, usually. And the quality has its own personality. And, uh, and I think we'll continue shooting with medium format. We're shooting with the Hasselblad. Also, we don't shoot with the motor drive because we shoot with the breath. Sometimes Deborah, I can see her breathing the same breath as the dancer. And when that breath is at a certain point, we actually take the photo. And it's, it's quite interesting to watch that. And with um, a motor drive, you would never get that experience. I move the light quite a bit while we're shooting. I adjust it. We've been using flash because we're shooting indoors. If I could afford it, I would love to shoot with HMIs. I would love to mix it up a little bit. But since we're working in our home, you know, we keep it fairly basic, uh, either one light short source and a fill. again in our picture. There's always a cat walking through. These are beautiful. I like the jump. <laughs> well, it feels like with social media, everyone is a photographer. I mean, everyone is sharing their pictures, whether they're good or not. And even photographers are putting up snapshots as well. So social media has been a great medium for us to share our images with dancers around the world. Um, and people who love dance as well. We just did a shoot for Harper's Bazaar and they found us through our Instagram accounts. Whereas before when we had portfolios and we had to send it out all the time, I think it was harder to get your work out there. In order to protect our work, uh, I have a feeling once you put it out on the internet, you've sort of lost basic control of your work. I want people to see my images. I want my images to be passed around. I, want, you know, I don't want to keep it locked up in a box. Mm -hmm. When there's abuse, you know, hopefully with a friendly email that that can be corrected. We've been watermarking our images, which some people end up taking off, but we still try to keep our name on the images. But for social media and for internet use, um, they're very small, low res images. So our final usage of the images is really more in galleries or in a, we're making a book of our work. So in that sense, no one can really, you know, print from these low res JPEGs online. I feel like um, the education of young photographers has always been hard because they teach you about photography and if you're lucky they teach you good technical skills, maybe artistic skills, but photography has always been a business and it's always hard to understand all the different aspects that are involved in running a business by yourself. You know, you have to market yourself, you have to keep all your accounting, you have to understand so many different elements beyond just taking a picture. I, th I think it can be a really lonely business being a photographer. I mean, you have to wear many hats and our collaboration and working together has made it very pleasurable. I mean, you never just take the picture. I feel like that's a very lucky photographer who doesn't have to think about anything else. At this point in our careers, Ken and I both did commercial work for years and this was a project we wanted to do that was really for us. We ended up making it into a coffee table book, which is coming out this October, but for us it was really a labor of love. Personally, if you do anything well, money will come. I think if you go after the money, that you really limit yourself. My best tip for a photographer, young or old, is to photograph what you love. I think when you have a passion for a subject matter, um, and you really delve into that subject matter, that it will come through in the images. When people photograph something they don't know about or don't care that much about, it shows.
I was not a photographer, I would be a dancer. I'd be watching. <laughs>